Hi, and welcome to this short concept bite, which shows how the entropy changes during phase changes. We have already seen phase equilibria and examined the phenomena from the perspective of enthalpy change. And here we examine how the entropy changes during this thermodynamic process. Again, I'm going to consider the simplified system of solid, liquid and gas phases. The solid has strong intermolecular interactions and long range order. Liquids have slightly less strong intermolecular interactions. Energy in the form of heat was required to break the intermolecular bonds. For a gas to form, if we consider it ideal, we have to completely break the intermolecular interactions, again requiring energy in the form of heat to break the bonds. Now, there are two ways we can proceed with our understanding from this point. We can consider the area under our plot of Cp over T against T, or we can relate entropy to the energy provided as heat reversibly, divided by the temperature of that phase change. If we look at this first case and how the heat capacity divided by temperature changes with temperature, there are clear changes in the heat capacity of a material during the phase change since the change of phase allows clear differences of the energy levels and population of those levels within a system. The absolute entropy of the system is the area underneath this plot, or mathematically, the integral. We can look at how the total entropy of a system changes as a function of temperature. So the total entropy of the system is the residual entropy, or entropy still remaining at zero Kelvin, plus the entropy of heating from absolute zero to the melting temperature. Then we see a clear step in the entropy of the system as there is the phase change of melting. Then we have the increase in entropy as we increase the temperature of the liquid between the freezing and boiling point. Then the entropy change of boiling, followed by the entropy of the gas as its temperature increases from the boiling temperature. The entropy of this phase change is the energy provided as heat divided by the temperature this transition occurs at. And if we are under constant pressure conditions and because the heat is provided reversibly, this energy provided as heat is the enthalpy change. Consequently, the entropy change during a phase change is the enthalpy of that phase change divided by the temperature of that phase change. Frederick Troughton looked at a large amount of data looking at the relationship between the molar enthalpy of vaporisation and the boiling point. He found that the entropy change for vaporisation is around 10.5 R, or about 85 to 88 joules per Kelvin per mole. This value comes about from using the Boltzmann definition of entropy and the changes to energy levels as the molar volume changes. There are a few exceptions to this rule though. Liquids with hydrogen bonding have a lower molar entropy in the liquid phase than those without, and so the entropy change for this process is bigger than predicted by Troughton's rule. Some carboxylic acids, such as formic acid, display this hydrogen bonding in the liquid phase, but also form dimers in the gas phase, resulting in a negative deviation from this rule. Other molecules, such as methane, also show this same deviation. Methane shows this lower than expected entropy of vaporisation because it has a small moment of inertia and consequently a large rotational constant B, corresponding to large spacing of rotational energy levels. And from our Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, only a small population of molecules in excited rotational energy levels and consequently a relatively low entropy of the gas phase. You will learn more about rotational constants in another part of this course. I hope that this video has refreshed the concept of phase changes to you and has helped you understand the entropy changes for these processes. It is important to remember that phase changes are reversible processes and so, at constant pressure, there is an easily calculated relationship between the enthalpy and entropy of a phase change. I hope that you found this interesting. As always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask.